Okay, and I want to uh, tell you about something called the Bode Sensitivity Integral, and so it's our man Bode again, and another one of his cen central contributions to the theory of feedback. And the Bode Sensitivity Integral is all about feedback trade-offs. So we've already seen that um, control system design is all about balancing lots and lots of uh, tra different objectives against each other and trading off, say, reference tracking against uh, disturbance attenuation or rejecting noise and all, all of this kind of thing. And thrown into the mix are various actually conservation laws about what can be achieved with feedback. And that's what the Bode sensitivity integral is really uh, all about. It's about a conservation law feedback that must always be satisfied. Um, so in order to explain um, what it is, let's just remind ourselves what we're talking about. So we have some setup where we have um, a controller and a plant in negative feedback, uh, something like that. And the sensitivity function, so sensitivity function, it was just this transfer function s, which is equal to 1 over 1 plus PC. And PC, this was what we were calling L, or our return ratio. Um, and we've sort of seen the sensitivity function pop up in all sorts of different aspects of the design objectives that we were talking, out be uh, talking about before. And in fact, it's so... One of, the, one of the reasons that it's so central is that the sensitivity function appears in every single closed loop transfer function, and it also tells you how the closed loop transfer function is different from the open loop transfer function. So if I have a disturbance acting on my process, and I want to see how it affects my uh, output y, well in open loop the transfer function is p, in closed loop it's p multiplied by the sensitivity function. So if you like the sensitivity function is really managing the effect of feedback and you, you could argue that feedback is really about tuning sensitivity function to rescale all of the closed loop transfer functions to, to meet um, your various design objectives. So it's this absolutely central object, and in particular we saw that s of j omega very small was, was good for a number of objectives. So if we wanted good disturbance rejection, we wanted very small values of the sensitivity function. If we wanted um, the behavior from some reference to the output y to not depend very much on changes in the process, uh, then we wanted a uh, small value of the sensitivity function. Um, and Bode's sensitivity integral is saying, um, if you like, that whenever you make the sensitivity function small somewhere, you'll necessarily make it bigger somewhere else. So if, if we design our control system to push the sensitivity function down, in certain frequency ranges, it's going to pop up somewhere else and probably uh, negatively affect your system performance there. So if you like, there's a conservation law on the net size of the sensitivity function, and that's what we're going to um, describe now. And so it comes with a few um, caveats. So L, um, L of S, must be given by the ratio of two polynomials. So we're talking about these differential equation models, really. Um, so no delays. Um, so L of S is the ratio of two polynomials, say P and Q. Um, I don't remember, if I'm honest, I believe things only get worse when you start to include the effect of delays. So the statement that we're going to give now is just for um, real rational transfer functions, um, but don't think you're going to save the day by bringing in um, delays or anything like that. You're just going to make things even worse. Um, and more than that, the, uh, the degree of Q has to be greater than or equal to the degree of P plus 2. What does that mean? Well, um, let's say p is s squared plus 4. 
um, then the polynomial in the denominator must have powers at least two higher than this. So for example, s to the 5 plus 3s squared plus 2s plus 1, this would satisfy this degree condition because the highest power in the denominator is 2 or greater than um, the highest power in the numerator. We would be fine if this was s to the 4 as well, but if we didn't have that term and say that was s cubed, um, then, then we wouldn't meet this degree condition. Uh, you can adapt things um, to, to get rid of this constraint. It's not a problem, it just makes things a bit more complicated. And also this is really very likely to be satisfied in practice. I mean, whenever we've been drawing our Nyquist plots, they've always been going into the origin. It's very common for uh, particular processes to exhibit uh, very high frequency roll off. Um, in which case you, you would certainly get this property here. So, so these are our like, caveats for what we're about to say. And um, what does the Bode sensitivity integral then say? It says that the integral from 0 to infinity of log of the size of the sensitivity function with respect to omega is equal to a constant. And that constant is pi multiplied by the sum over right half plane poles of L of s. And then in here we have the real part of those poles. Um, so to give you an example, uh, let's say, um, that L of s was equal to 1 over s minus 2. We have 1, and then let, just say over s plus 1. Well, L of s has got one right half plane pole. It's at the value of s is equal to 2. It's not a complex number, so the real part of 2 is just 2. And so the Bode sensitivity integral would be saying that if L of s has got this form, then um, the, this, the sensitivity integral would be equal to pi multiplied by 2. And the key thing is that this would happen, you know, we could multiply this by any stable transfer function and we won't change this. So the, the point here really is that you've got, if you've got some unstable poles in your process, um, this will lead to a, a constant term. Um, on the right hand side here. And in particular what you see is um, uh, unstable poles make this quantity bigger. And we'll see what that means uh, in a second. So you have this invariant on this integral to do with the sensitivity function that depends on the right half plane poles of L of s or more likely on the right half plane poles of your process p. It's quite rare to design unstable controllers. Um, I mean, speaking theoretically, you can even, if you want, you can come up with uh, plants P that can only be stabilized by unstable controllers and all sorts of silly things like that. But in practice, you're unlikely to use an unstable controller. Um, so let's sort of just try and draw a picture and understand what this uh, tells us. So here, on the x-axis we have frequency, and on the y-axis we're going to have the log of the size of the sensitivity function, and this is values of zero, and so what values of s does this correspond to? This corresponds to s is equal to one, so log of one is zero. And so now we just plot s of j omega, and in its absolute value, or log of s of j omega, and we get some curve that looks something like this, say. And what the Bode sensitivity um, integral is telling us is that this, I don't want to use that one, um, this area, this signed area, so this is my, a negative area, this is a positive 
area. This is negative and so on. This area here, the net area here must be equal to pi over the sum of right half plane poles. So in particular, at best, this is zero. If we have a system with no right half plane poles, the negative area must equal the positive area. And if we have right half plane poles, then things get even worse. We have to have more positive, positive area. Why is this bad? Well, because of this. We saw in most of our uh, design objectives, we wanted our sensitivity function small. And pushing this down, well, we know we're going to get a massive positive area as a result. Um, and so this is something that you have to deal with um, at all times. And in particular, you see controlling unstable poles. Uh, systems with unstable poles is quantifiably harder uh, in a very precise way here. And if your system is very unstable, so it's got poles way into the right half plane, then the situation will be almost unmanageable. Um, so if you remember uh, when we were talking about disturbance attenuation, we said you want to avoid ever going into having a sensitivity, f a point where your sensitivity function is um, uh, more than two. Well, it gets very difficult to achieve this if you if you've got some enormous net positive area, um, then almost certainly you're going to you're going to have high sensitivity in some range, and it's sort of in a way, if if you like, it renders some uh, systems essentially impossible to control. And sort of this is another important part of the the feedback trade off is knowing how to do design. Um, and also knowing when you need to go away and rebuild your process um, or something like that, just because it's, it's, it's too unwieldy to, to, to control, if you like. Um, but uh, there you have this sort of uh, conservation law that runs at the very heart of all of um, closed loop feedback design. And uh, we'll just finish things off by doing a sort of a sketchy uh, derivation of this result.